Hello everyone, it's your host, your friend, your boy, Jet Black, the one and only, here with another exciting video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about Tower of God, Episode 5. So I just watched Episode 5 of Tower of God, and a lot happened in this episode. I was actually really surprised. Um, where we last left off in Episode 4, um, our main guy was sitting on the throne. By the way, it's been so long since I've watched Tower of God. Tower of God. Um, I don't remember everybody's names. I think the main guy's name is Bomb, but I might be wrong on that. Anyways, I'm horrible with names when it comes to anime. So Bomb, the main guy, is sitting on the throne. They're taking a test where it's like the last team who has a representative still sitting on the throne with a crown uh, will be able to essentially like beat the entire tower without taking any more tests. So it's like, if we can beat this test, We'll just hit our end goal, like, immediately. Um, and they're essentially doing, like, their own, like, little, like, tuning exam thing. So it's like, ooh, like, are they going to get it? Um, or are they going to have to do more tests? Um, so he's sitting on the throne. It's revealed that uh, the blue-haired guy, again, I don't remember anybody's names anymore, that his bag not only can hold what seems like anything... Um, but it can also, like, copy stuff, and it creates temporary copies, um, but it also seems like he can, like, dump his bag to the point where it seems like it's empty, but it actually still has more stuff in it, uh, so it's, like, it's almost like a bag of holding, but it's also, like, a bag of copying in a way. Um, it's revealed that he used his bag in order to copy the crown so that he could trick everybody into fighting over a fake crown. And then, while everybody was fighting over the fake crown, he was able to get Bomb on the throne with the real crown. He then also reveals that he actually had, like, an entire team hidden in his bag. And that now that he's released them from the bag, they're kind of like their own squad. And they fight in support of the main team. So we get to see his team go off and essentially protect Bomb on the throne. That round of the test ends, but they're like, it's the last round. They're like, the strongest guys are going to come and try and take the throne. So now, we get to see the blue-haired guy and Rock, the alligator dude, essentially go ham and fight. At least that's what we think we're going to see. And we kind of do see that. Um, but there's this woman in like a black uh, unitard or whatever, or leotard. I, I don't remember which is the right... Uh, like term, but she's essentially in like a full body skin type black suit with like a mask and she has a staff and she just starts whooping everybody. She's taking out literally everybody. She seems unstoppable, more or less. Um, the team that seems to have like the mysterious girl who Bomb thinks might be Rachel on it, uh, they're like, we're going to actually help Bomb win. And Bomb's like, yo, girl who looks like Rachel, are you Rachel? And she just doesn't answer. All she says is like, we're not going to take the crown from you. We're going to like let you guys like take this W. And one member of her team, who seems to be like really strong, just starts going ham on the black uh, unitard girl. Uh, so it seems like she actually can like keep up with the black unitard girl um, and fight her. But her heel breaks on her shoe and she falls over, which gives the black unitard girl the opportunity to rush at Bomb. So she rushes toward Bomb. Rachel is in between the black unitard girl and Bomb. So the black unitar girl attacks Rachel, but she catches Rachel by surprise because the black unitar girl is moving so quickly because she's just a straight beast. So Rachel gets knocked to the ground. Um, Bomb freaks out because you got to remember the whole reason why he's like taking all these tests and trying to climb the Tower of God is to find Rachel. So he's like, if Rachel is right here and she's about to die right in front of me, I'm not going to let that happen. So he gets off the throne, which immediately causes his team to like lose the test, but doesn't matter to him. 
he gets off the throne to try and protect Rachel, and he pushes Rachel out of the way, and then he gets hit in the back of the head by the black unitar chick. Suddenly, Sinzu, like the magical energy of Tower of God, like erupts from his body and blasts the mask off of the unitar girl's face. Uh, like only half of the mask is broken away and like cuts the unitar girl's eye like down the middle, like vertically, uh, which is pretty gross. But she starts like bleeding out of her face and like half her mask is gone. And the eruption of Sinzu is like nothing anybody's ever seen before. Because normally whenever you manipulate Sinzu, there's some kind of restriction. So we've seen people like use Sinzu uh, using like items. And there's that one like sleepy dude who sleeps all the time. But when he's not sleeping, it seems like he's a powerful Sinzu user. We've seen stuff like that. But he erupts with Sinzu and then he picks up his sword and he's about to like kill the black unitar chick with his sword. But then the spirit that's inside of the sword, um, again, I don't remember a lot about Tower of God because it took me forever to finally see episode five. Uh, <laughs> but the chick who's in the sword, who we saw like in like the first episode or the second episode, she's like, yeah, you lost control. Uh, so go to sleep. And then Bomb just kind of passes out with the sword. So Bomb's team doesn't win the test. Bomb is put in the infirmary. The guy who uh, was doing the crown test, he's like, yo, I've never seen anything like what Bomb just did. That was crazy. Then like the head of like the test calls that guy into um, their room and serves them some instant coffee. And uh, the dude who did the crown test is like, hey, why'd you have me do the crown test? And the person who's overall the test is like, um, the reason why I had you do the crown test is because we're trying to see if there's anyone who's a threat to the tower who we need to like expel from the tower. And they're like, that's also why I put that team in there, the team that um, had no interest in getting the crown. And the guy who's over the crown test is like, yo, it seems like Bomb knows that girl who may or may not be Rachel. Acquaintances can't do the test together. So are you like breaking the rules of the tower and like making it where these two people who shouldn't be able to take the test at the same time are taking it at the same time? And then the head of the test is like, shut up, I'm trying to protect the tower. Now, did anyone use any abilities that would make them seem like they're a threat to the tower? And then the dude who did um, the crown test is like, nah, nobody used any abilities that were a threat to the tower. But do you know anybody who can use Sinzu, like the magical water energy or whatever, uh, without restraint? And then the head of the test is like, yeah, there are these people called Irregulars, and she like name drops an Irregular. I think his name's like Mazzino or something. And uh, she's like, is she or he? Test is like a, a man or a woman. I think he might be a man. I don't know. But anyways, the head of all the tests or whatever says like, yeah, there are Irregulars who are like that. Uh, extremely powerful people. Mazzino's one. And then the head of the crown test is like, cool, yeah, so I'm gonna dip now, thanks for talking. And then uh, the crown test guy walks out and he's like, oh snap, Bomb's like an irregular who can like manipulate Sinzu without restriction. That probably is a risk to the tower. Dang. So then a uh, blue haired guy is in the infirmary with Bomb and Bomb is still knocked unconscious. Apparently they've been given three days of rest and blue haired guy is like, yo, bomb. Like, you gotta wake up. If you don't wake up, we're gonna lose. We're not gonna be able to like progress um, through the tower, but we need you. Like, I think they're at risk of maybe getting like disqualified or whatever, um, if bomb doesn't wake up. So then, um, whatchamacallit, 
uh, Rachel, the girl reveals herself and she's like, my name is Rachel. Um, and I want to make a deal with you or whatever. She says that to blue haired guy. And that's how it ends. That's how they end episode five. Um, this episode was really interesting. I like the crown test and all the battle stuff that they did. Um, I don't like that Rachel doesn't just reveal who she is. But I guess now that I know that there's a rule where it's like acquaintances can't take the test together, I guess Rachel is kind of forced into a position where she has to at the very least pretend that she doesn't know who Bomb is. Or else they'll like be disqualified from the test. Like I think that's her way of trying to like hide that like she knows Bomb is that she's pretending that she doesn't know who he is. Uh, so that's fair. Like, now that we know that information, I guess I understand why she did it. It just seemed really weird, it, like, in the moment, like, why she didn't say so. But it makes sense now I think about it. So, I guess it's just a good episode. I don't know. I still want to learn more about, like, how Blue Hair's bag works. Um, all the characters are good. I kind of wish we could have seen more of the characters different abilities, but I did notice that um, the last couple fights were just like, so there are a few people who are really good and everybody else is a jobber. So we don't get to see the jobbers powers because they're just going to immediately lose. Excuse me. Like when blue haired dude revealed that he had like a whole other team of people in his bag that were loyal to him, his team just was wiping out everybody. They have one girl who can like lift her hand up and just incapacitate you. It's like, it looks like it's like a psychic attack. And then he has this weird monster dude in his bag who can like grab you with his tendrils and then that incapacitates you. Like he essentially had a bunch of dudes in his bag who were just like, our power is we just like shut people down. So they shut everybody down. And blue haired dude is like, I released the team because I felt like we could use a moment to rest before we face off against like the strongest people ourselves. So when they fought against the strongest people, uh, he no longer had access to like his bonus team. So then they had to fight, but then they didn't really fight anybody because the black unitard chick is like, oh, I'm just the best. So I'm just gonna whoop everybody right now. So Black Unitard Chick with her staff, like I mentioned earlier, she whooped everybody on her own. You don't really get to see anybody else's powers. The only people you see fight other than the Black Unitard Chick uh, is Rachel's team. And Rachel has one girl on her team who's like a beast, um, who's like a really good fighter, and she seems really confident. And then you have another team who's more literally like a beast. She's like a big monster person with a giant sword. We don't really get to see that character fight at all. We just get to see that they exist and that they have an imposing presence. That's about it. Um, but I guess that's my only complaint is that it seems like we went from, oh, this is like the strongest of the strong. Everybody has like really cool techniques and are like fairly powerful to like, Clearly, there are people that just straight up stomp other people, and because they are so good, you just won't be able to see the weaker people fight, even if you're curious like what the weaker people are capable of. So I hope in future episodes, we get to see the weaker people maybe face off against each other, so that they can actually like have moments where you get to see what they're capable of. That's like the main thing I feel like I missed in this episode. Um, but the show is good. I just, like, I haven't watched Tower of God since the last Tower of God video I did. I think I rewatched episode four when I realized they were dubbing Tower of God. I was like, oh, there's a dub now? So I'm watching the dub now. Uh, but episode five is good. If you were already watching Tower of God, just watch episode five. Like, what are you waiting for? And if you haven't been watching Tower of God, watch my video that gets you caught up on like the first four episodes or whatever. It's just a good show. I, I just like it. Um, I'm a big fan of Hunter Hunter. I'm caught up on like the Hunter Hunter manga. 
And Tower of God, on occasion, will give me, like, Hunter Hunter vibes. It just seems like a good show. Go watch it. Thank you all for watching. If you guys like this video, make sure to smash that like button. Favorite, comment, subscribe, and ding, ding, ding. Ring the notification bell to be notified when we do these videos. The show's your friend, your boy, Jeb like the one only. Log out. Wait, hold on. Before I end the video, there's this big conflict where it's like, if Bomb doesn't win the big match or whatever, that he has to give the special sword he has to that princess of Jihad who has green skin, who kind of looks like a frog. I want to see where that goes. Because the princess of Jihad who's trying to get that sword is shown in this episode as well, that she's like fairly close to like finally getting to bomb. So I think she's gonna show up and go, okay, give me my sword back. And then I think the green skin Prince of J princess of Jihad is gonna show up and she's gonna be like, no, he promised me that sword. And then I think it's gonna raise like a whole other conflict. But anyways, now I'm gonna end it. Thank you all for watching. If you guys like that video, like this video, make sure to smash that like button, favorite, comment, subscribe, and ding, ding, ding. Ring the notification bell to be notified whenever we do these videos. This is your friend, your boy, Jump like the one only. Log out. Peace. Check me out.